Today I will continue my chapter which is on transport in plants. This is part 3. The video on part 1 and part 2. I have provided link of that video in description box of this video. So today we will study how water moves long distance in plant. In that we will study apoplast pathway and symplast pathway and how water move upward direction in plants. So in that we will study root pressure and transpiration pull. So now we will study long distance transportation of water. Diffusion is a slow process and it occur only for short distance. So you can see here water molecule travel only 50 micrometer distance in 2.5 seconds. So if plant height is 400 meter or 500 meter you can think that how much time they will take for travel or how many years they will take for this travel. So water and minerals and food they generally move by mask or bulk flow and bulk flow can be achieved through positive hydrostatic pressure like a garden hose. Garden hose is a tube you use to give water to plant okay so you create hydrostatic pressure in it and other is negative hydrostatic pressure it's similar like you are creating suction in a straw so bulk movement of substance occur through vascular tissue of plant by process translocation and what vascular tissue these are these are xylem and phloem and xylem is associated with the translocation of water, mineral, organic nitrogen, hormone from root to aerial parts of plant. So xylem makes travel of this all ingredients or nutrients and mineral from root to aerial part and phloem translocate organic and inorganic solute from leaves to other part of plant. How do plant absorb water? We all know that water absorbed in plant by roots. So there are millions of root hairs present on root which absorb water and mineral. These root hairs are thin walled slender extension of root epidermal cell and they increase surface area for absorption. So now water is absorbed along with mineral solute by root hair purely by diffusion process. So once water is absorbed in root hair, now water use two distinct pathway. One is apoplast pathway and other is symplast pathway for its movement in root cell. So now we will study what these pathways are. We will study apoplastic movement. So we know that plant cell remain adjacent to each other. So this is cell wall of plant and inside cell wall this is cell membrane. Inside cell membrane this is cytoplasm and these cytoplasm are connected with another cell cytoplasm by plasmodesmata which is the channel which connect two cell cytoplasm. Okay. So when water moves through the cell wall, that movement is called apoplast movement or that root is called apoplast root. So this movement through apoplastic manner remain up to endodermis. Now in endodermis there is Casparian strip which don't allow movement of water through apoplastic movement or through cell wall. So now water will enter in cytoplasm and then from here it will move further through plasmodesmata and reach to xylem. So this is the apoplastic movement of water through cell wall. So I already told you movement through apoplastic road it occur through cell wall. It doesn't involve crossing of water molecule to the cell membrane. And movement is totally depend upon concentration gradient. And apoplast doesn't provide any kind of restriction or barrier to water molecule. And water molecules, they move in mass flow in apoplastic route. 
So, what makes water to flow through apoplastic route? So, some of the water evaporate in intercellular space and some of the water moves to atmosphere. It creates tension in the stream of water which is moving in apoplastic route. So, water has adhesive and cohesive property which help movement of water in mass flow through apoplastic route. So now we will study symplastic movement and we know that plant cells they are connected with each other and their cytoplasm are connected through plasmodesmata. So water enter into cytoplasm and they move from cytoplasm of one cell to cytoplasm of another cell through plasmodesmata. So water has to enter the cell through cell membrane hence movement is relatively slow and again the movement is again down a potential gradient. So most of the water flow in root occur through apoplastic manner. Okay, But this movement of water in apoplastic manner occur up to endodermis because endodermis has a Casparian strip which doesn't allow water to move further through apoplastic manner. So now water will enter into cytoplasm and when it enter in cytoplasm it move further through symplastic route. From this figure I will make you further clear how symplastic and apoplastic movement occur. So you can see this is the root here and this is the root. Okay. So water will enter into apoplastic root into cell wall. So this pink line you can see here the, this is showing movement of water in cell wall and water is moving into cell wall. Some of the water enter into cytoplasm when it grows cell membrane and now water is further moving and uh, it is moving up to endodermis. Now water will not move through apoplastic route from this endodermis further because this endodermis contain this purple line you can see. This purple line is Casparian strip. This Casparian strip doesn't allow water molecule to move further. So now water will enter into cytoplasm and from cytoplasm it will move further through symplastic route and from here it will enter into xylem. Now water is freely move here. So now can you can see here symplastic movement. So in symplastic movement water cross the cell wall enter into cell membrane and from cell membrane it enters cytoplasm and two cells are connected with each other through plasmodesmata water will cross this plasmodesmata and enter into the xylem and it can cross this endodermis layer very easily. So once inside the xylem water is again free to move between the cell. In young root water enter directly into xylem vessel or tracheads. So these are non-living conduits and these are part of apoplast. Sometime Plants have additional support for absorption of water from ground and these additional supports are called mycorrhiza. So mycorrhiza is a symbiotic association of fungus with the root. So symbiotic relationship is a relationship which are mutual benefit for each other. So fungus will provide benefit to root and root will provide benefit to fungus. So what kind of benefit is this? So fungus filament helps absorption of water and mineral to root cell while root cell helps to provide sugar or N containing compound to fungus. Some plants have obligate association with mycorrhiza. For example, pinus seed cannot germinate or establish in absence of mycorrhiza. 
So now water enter into plant system through root by apoplastic manner and symplastic manner. So now further how water moves from stem to other part of plant like leaves. What makes water to move upward direction against the gravity? So it needs some kind of pump system. So these pump systems are of two types. One is root pressure and another is transpiration pull. So what is root pressure? We know that there is continuous absorption of water and minerals from soil into the to root and further its movement into vascular tissue. So this increase the pressure inside the xylem. Xylem is the vascular tissue. This positive pressure is called root pressure and it is responsible for pushing water up to small height up to the stem. So how you can say root pressure exists? So choose a small soft stem plant and choose a day when atmospheric moisture is high. So just make a horizontal cut through a sharp blade on stem. So soon you will see some drops of water will ooze out from the cut part. So this will show you there is a positive root pressure. So you can collect that water through some tube and you can measure the rate of exudation. So loss of water in liquid phase by exudation process is called gutation. So this shows that root pressure exists. So root pressure is just a modest push for water movement in plant system. So root pressure role is to maintain continuous flow of water molecule in xylem because water evaporate into the environment through plant cell. This evaporation can break the movement of water in xylem. So this root pressure maintain the continuous flow of water in xylem. Now next is transpiration pool. So upward flow of water through xylem in plant can achieve fairly high rate up to 15 meters per hour. So there is a question. Water movement occur through post effect or pulled effect. So mostly researchers they believe that it is pulled effect and the driving force for this process is transpiration from the leaves. So this is referred as cohesion tension transpiration pull model. So here question arises, what generate this transpiration pull? So water is transient in plant and water reach up to the leaves. Leaves use only 1% of water for photosynthesis and plant growth. Remaining water they lost in environment through the stomata and this water loss is known as transpiration. So this loss of water through stomata in environment is called transpiration pull. So this is the movement or transportation of water from root to leaves or other part of plants. So next video we will study more about transpiration and photosynthesis and movement of minerals and other important component in plant system. So thank you for watching the video.